Jerusalem, not way up north in the Galilee. Um, Jesus was crucified. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room, um, all right there in Jerusalem. Why now is do we have this confab back in all the way back up in the Galilee? Um, and it's not just by coincidence. I just want to remind you there are several instances in the Gospels, one of which is at the, uh, the last supper as recorded in Matthew's Gospel, that Jesus himself says to the disciples, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. So they get a heads up right there at the last supper. Hey, I'm going, and to say that I'm going ahead of you, Suggests that, oh, you're going to be coming there too, and I'm just going to get there first. We're going to rendezvous again in the Galilee. <clears throat> and then uh, Matthew 28 10, a parallel text in Mark 16 7, uh, Jesus speaks to the women at the tomb and says something to the effect of, Do not be afraid, go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will there, they will see me. Why do you think, why do you think Jesus here ahead of, totally ahead of his, uh, his crucifixion and death and resurrection, why is he going ahead and suggesting to the disciples, we need to get back together in Galilee? Any idea of why that might have been the case? They were all fishermen. Sorry? They were all fishermen. That's another way to be. They were all fishermen. That's what was familiar to them. Uh, where did Jesus call these, these, these this, this ragtag bunch to be his disciples? In the Galilee, while they were fishing. And it's really that familiarity piece that I think is, is, is key. Golly, that, the, the tail end of Holy Week, I don't think we, I don't think there's any way we can really capture and, and fully get a sense of the experience of what it must have been like for the disciples. We kind of beat up on them because after the Last Supper, of course, there's the, 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 the episode of Jesus praying in the garden and the disciples kept nodding off, falling asleep. Well, for one thing, for that, where the Last Supper probably was and where the Garden of Gethsemane, we're pretty sure he is, is separated by the very, very huge Kidron Valley. It's, it, it was, my, my point being, it was quite a, I was gonna say walk, almost a hike, to get from the upper room over to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is praying. And we, where, what's with these guys? They can't even stay away. Well, remember, they just had the Passover meal. Heavy on bread, heavy on carbs, heavy on wine. It's late at night. And then they trek across the Kidron Valley. I would have probably been drowsy too. And not, not while Jesus is over there praying and I've got a full belly, I've got a, the wine's kicking in and it's late and we just have a long walk and oh gosh, I'm just, I'm just gonna nod off over here. Um, you know, late night, early morning, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, same thing with Peter and his denial. Um, well, you know, the heat was on, and uh, I don't know that any of us could have mustered much better with Roman soldiers standing around and the high priest is involved, and it's pretty clear it's getting pretty hot and serious here. Uh, nah, I don't, I don't know him. No, no. Um, and then even after, um, after everything goes down, um, think about the text we always have for the first Sunday after Easter, the Doubting Thomas text. Um, and, and one of the things I find enlightening about that text is not so much Thomas. And matter of fact, I'm kind of, I kind of raised Thomas up as the only one who had the courage to be out and about. Where are the other ones? Behind locked doors, cowered down, afraid. At least Thomas was out moving around, walking around, out and about a bit. What he was doing, we don't have any idea. But the other guys were there hunkered down, afraid. Uh, which again is evidence of what 
how tumultuous uh, those last days uh, were. And even once the resurrection was, was, uh, was, was announced by the women still, I mean, just the, again, trying to imagine to my beach reference yesterday how loose the sand must have felt beneath those, those disciples' feet with everything that had unfolded. So again, all of that is to say that in suggesting a return and even a rendezvous in Galilee, I really think a lot of that has to do with Jesus knowing that given everything they'd experienced in their whole time with him, but particularly that last little slice of Holy Week in the days shortly thereafter, yeah, they needed to get out of Jerusalem and get back to some a more a more peaceful setting and more a more familiar setting. Um, even to this day, when I take groups to Israel and, and I ask them uh, about you know places they enjoyed and, and and really really liked, well, of course, in Jerusalem you find some pretty important stuff: the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the tomb of Golgotha, uh, the upper room. The list goes on, the Garden of Gethsemane. But invariably, most people, and I include myself in this, say, you know what? Yeah, but I was kind of glad just to get out of the city and get to the Galilee, you know, the Galilee or the wilderness. Just so much, just so much more relaxing than all of this uh, hustle, bustle, and even politics then as now associated with the city. So I think Jesus knew the disciples needed that to get back to their familiar. Uh, uh, their, their familiar surroundings, their familiar pastime, occupation, condition, which I believe is then in what I think is is being taught to us in this text of John 21 and the exchange between Peter and uh, and Jesus. If there's anything we can say about Jesus and by extension, therefore, about God. Uh, based on the Gospels and based on how we see Jesus behave and do ministry and interact with people is this. Jesus meets us where we are. Wherever that may be. Um, this is not a God, this is not a Savior who sits off somewhere and waits for us to come banging down the door. I know there's the popular piece of art from Revelation. Jesus knocks at the door. Well, again, that's Jesus doing the knocking, by the way, not us. Um, but can't say that enough. Um, think, think about some instances from the Gospels where that would be well illustrated, where you find Jesus meeting someone where they are, what about the Samaritan woman in the well? Right? Jesus didn't put bill, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus never bought a, bought a billboard and said, you know, worship service here at this particular time, y'all come. Jesus always met people where they were. Um, the numerous healings that Jesus did at the Bethesda pools in Jerusalem. Uh, the healing of the blind man down at the Siloam pool. All of that, uh, every single time, just you know, open your Gospels and, and just start reading. And, and what you find is, time and time again, um, I would argue Jesus meeting people where they are. Uh, and that is just so important for the gospel falls apart if that isn't true. And actually, what, what's good about the gospel if if we have to kind of figure out where Jesus is finding? There's no good news in that. Talk about anxiety and depression. But what if I can't find him? Well, don't worry, he's found you. Uh, so I know some of you are aware, just to, and what an example that just makes that so real to me is um, a ministry going on in the synod right now in, uh, in Greenwood. It's a recovery residence uh, for women that are in the process of, uh, of dealing with uh, some form of substance abuse, uh, getting over that uh, recovery. 
and uh, you know, talk about the need for folks to be met where they are. Um, there's some amazing, amazing things that are already happening, and that's not even going on for a year yet. And and, and what it does, uh, I think part of why it's, it's it's being so successful is it by by its very design is bringing the church, bringing the support of the church to these women, not trying to lure them into a church building, but surrounding them in a home where they're involved in a program and bringing the love and support of the church to them, not just in that physical location of that house, but where they are in a more metaphorical sense in their journey of recovery. Um, been a number of baptisms already among these women. It's just it's incredible what's happening. Uh, and again, I really think that's the power of the gospel. Um, it, it, it's just not good if, if, if the Lord does not meet us where we are in our own journeys. So let's, let's shift then to the